Hi everyone, welcome back to another update. It's been a few weeks since I uploaded anything, uh, but I've been really, really busy at work and I've been restricted to watering on an evening and this last week's been uh, quite a week, hasn't it? It's been really, really hot and I've been watering about two hours every night. I've just done about two hours of watering this evening. It's Sunday, uh, bank holiday Monday tomorrow. Um, didn't do very much for a few weeks and then I've had a few days and I've uh, taken the plot to, to task and I've done quite a bit of weeding, rejigged the greenhouses and done quite a bit of planting out as well. So I'm going to give you a brief tour of the plot and what I've done. I'll try and keep it as brief as I can but there is a lot to look at um, and I'll, I'll get back to you in a minute. We'll start off with the no dig plot and you can see that most, in fact all of the beds now, have got things in them. I've just put about a dozen sweet corn plants in the, the last of the uh, raised beds, just on the left there. Only about a dozen, uh, they didn't germinate very well. It, the, the variety is called Ambrosia. And to the right of it, I've got a bed with shallots, spring onions and silver skin onions for pickling. The third bed has brassicas in it, three different varieties of cabbage, kohlrabi and a few lettuce just tucked down at the bottom. Carrot bed with a fleece around it, um, I think I'm going to have to replace the fleece. Um, it's a, a cheap solution but not a very effective one I don't think because it just acts as a sail. So I'm going to have to replace it with some EnviroMesh and uh, bite the bullet and spend 30 or 40 pounds. Uh, to get some uh, mesh that's wide enough. I may have to cut down the posts as well. In front of me here I've got a bed that's um, planted with a dwarf French bean. I think the variety is called Purple Queen. After that we've got some beetroot, swede and turnip, the elephant garlic is uh, really thickened up nicely in the bed at the top. And if we just take a look round the border, you'll see that I've planted pumpkins and squash all the way round the no dig border. And I think I've got about 17, 15 or 17 squash, a couple of marrow. And I've also chanced my arm and I've put in about 15 purple sprouting broccoli. They're dotted about and I'm hoping that the pigeons won't spot them because it would be a pain to try and uh, cover them up with a net. I've noticed a few have been nibbled but with a bit of luck we might escape with uh, half a dozen intact and we'll get to enjoy those later on in the year. We'll take a look, on, we'll take a look now on the plot and I'll just show you a few things closer up. Looking back at the entrance you can see I've put um, about 15 or 16 sunflower plants. There are nine uh, larger varieties and then some dwarf ones underneath. These are the purple queen dwarf French bean, the beetroot, elephant garlic, the carrots, they've germinated okay, and the kohlrabi. They seem to be doing all right. A little bit of damage possibly from a, a caterpillar or two, so I need to take a look at them. Here we've got the spring onions. They were multi-sown, eight or nine seeds to a, a module, to a cell tray. And these are the zebrun shallots, banana shallots, um, grown from seed. They went out about a week ago. The multi-sown beetroot that I showed you, they're coming on nicely as well. If you remember I added a little bit of soil to the planting hole because it's uh, not well rotten manure uh, that, that's on the, uh, the soil. As it, it's, um, it's fresh, more of a top dressing really. And interspersed into the beetroot are some Bedfordshire Champion onions. They were grown from seed. That's the, the blueberry bed. I've got lavender around the edge of the patio here and you can see just over here, you'll have to excuse my shadow because the, the sun's quite low, 
I've uh, put one of the uh, potting benches, this is a, a do-it-yourself version, two saw horses and some uh, decking screwed together. I've put this outside under the overhang from the stable and I've got my uh, radish there. I've also got some radish down here in this Belfast sink and there have been loads. This is the variety Cherry Bell and uh, I bought the seed from a company online, Mole Seeds, and they do bulk seed orders and they're really cheap. I suggest that you uh, try them out. They're, uh, they're offering, you know, the, the breadth of what they offer is a little bit restricted compared to some seed sites. Um, but you get about 10 times as much seed for your money. Um, I bought a 50 gram packet of radish seed. Not really appreciated how much 50 gram was. And it cost me about £2.90 or something like that. Not very much more than what it would cost to buy it from the garden centre. And I'm not kidding, there must have been about 20 times as much seed in it. You know, loads of seed. And they do lots of other things as well. I bought lots of spicy lettuce, uh, mixed leaf, all, all that kind of thing. Um, but uh, have a look. Mole seeds. In the greenhouse. This is the new one that I showed being erected a few uh, updates back. And... All of the cherry tomatoes are in. I've got a mixture. I've got Sun Gold, Zakura, Black Cherry, Black Opal, Red Pear. Um, I think I've got a few beefsteak at the back as well. Uh, country Taste. And I've also got um, the Black Pear Shaped Tomato. Uh, it's a Japanese one and it's called Black Trifle or Trifle, depending upon how you uh, pronounce it. All the potatoes that were in that greenhouse are, are out here now on the bed at the side and a couple of mara plants. The potatoes that were in the middle greenhouse, these were like a, a second batch that were planted. Uh, they're not as far on, um, but they're doing okay. I've not yet uh, upended any of the pots, but I will be, um, you know, the ones just at the side of the other greenhouse. I'll be upending them maybe maybe one pot, a pot of charlotte in a, maybe a week's time. In the middle greenhouse, um, I've put, um, just open this greenhouse, we'll have a look. I've put the potting bench that was in the top greenhouse. It's a bit confusing with all the uh, greenhouses and benches um, because I plan to keep this in here and to continue to grow uh, the... Uh, lettuce leaf and you can see it's beautiful stuff this um, it's already about six or eight inch high and i need to start cutting that um, i've got some more sown just here but this greenhouse is going to take the cucumbers peppers and aubergine i've got five cucumbers down there that are ready to go i have also got a few cape gooseberries peppers have not yet been, and aubergines for that matter, have not yet been potted on because they were very, very slow. I think I had to uh, re-sow the uh, aubergine as well. So uh, they're going to be slow um, um, and it's going to be later in the season when we get anything off them. Leeks are just there and some basil at the back, purple and green. So that's the middle greenhouse. Just outside of the middle greenhouse, Looks a little bit unsightly, but we've got four large tunnels full of brassicas. We've got Greyhound, Autumn Savoy, January Kings, and then six rows of Brussels sprouts. All the onions are, are coming on okay. Uh, this bed needs to be weeded. Um, I've weeded all the uh, sides of the paths. Um, several beds but I've still got two or three to, to weed and I'm going to be doing that in the evening so hopefully this coming week. A couple of rows of radish there and parsnips. Two rows have been uh, thinned and weeded but as you can see there's quite a bit of thinning out to do. Uh, the weeds have gone mad. Um, so that's the before and that's the after shot. We had to re-sow two rows of uh, 
parsnips. Um, and they've, they've all come through. This was a javelin. Uh, the white gem didn't uh, germinate. So as I say, we re them. So they'll be coming a little bit, little bit later. Monge too. <coughs> they were a bit patchy. They always seem to be in germination. And you can't see, but just to the left here is a broad drill of French dwarf beans as well. Just there. It's about two foot wide. So I have to remember not to walk on that. So that's the second plot. That's the second. That's the new no dig. We'll take a look at the large greenhouse and the, the remaining plot and a half. Just moving on to the third plot and looking inside the fruit cage and all the currants have gone mad. It's like a jungle in there, but there are quite a lot of currants on. I don't know if you can see. So, uh, I'm not certain whether that's clear or whether it's blurred. You might just be getting the, the wire, um, but there are lots in there. I had planned to put some uh, sweet candle in the uh, the baths, but I had six aubergine, sorry, not aubergine, uh, courgettes, um, and the temptation was too strong to resist, so they got popped in there. Um, they're, they're growing on all right. They've suffered a little bit in the, the heat this last week, uh, but I think they'll grow on okay. You can see the, the large greenhouse, so a quick look here. This is the greenhouse that has the beefsteak varieties and I've got 14 plants and you can see the names on the front. They're all uh, exotics, Hillbilly, Brandy Boy, uh, Paul Robeson, Ananas Noir, Caspian Pink, Pink Berkeley Tie-Dye, Cherokee Purple. Um, there are a few new ones in here but I think about 80% I grew last year and they were fantastic. I don't know if you saw any of the up uploads that I, I put on YouTube last year, last summer, but they were really stunning tomatoes. So uh, fingers crossed and uh, we'll have a good year again. Grapevine's doing all right. It's real, only really it's uh, second year, the start of the second year, but we have got some uh, bunches of grapes. Um, we might get maybe a dozen bunches, small bunches. That's the large greenhouse. We'll have a look at the plot. Looking at the third plot now, and as you can see, the uh, winter onions have all grown on. But the cold snap that we had about three or four weeks ago, well, that did for the, the red onions. Um, they've pretty much all gone to seed. Uh, we'll just take a, a closer look. I would say 95% have gone to seed, and they're not really uh, bulking up at the bottom. I don't think I don't think they will either. So we'll, well, I'll give them another week or so, and then I'll just clear them out. Um, we might be able to use a few of them. But the, the white overwintering onions, these have done all right. Um, I'd say about 5% have gone to seed, but there are quite a few in there that are going to be okay. I think, in fact, most of them we'll be able to use. Um, but uh, it does uh, beg the question, really, whether it's worth growing um, overwintering onions. Um, because you, you, you don't see any heat treated uh, overwintering onions and the white ones seem to fare better than the red I think that's everybody's experience the red seem to be very very quick to bolt and go to seed and with the kind of weather that we've been having in recent years it just seems pointless really growing them um, there is also a school of thought that they're responsible for um, bringing uh, onion rot onto uh, plots and I know it's spreading through the country so um, I might try some white overwintering onions next year but I think I'm going to give the the, the, the red a miss um, I'm not easily put off but uh, it just does seem like a waste of time uh, if they're just going to go to seed you can see some of the seed heads over there there they are look. Uh, but they're not going to bulk up Up at the top, we've got some beetroot um, that was sown into the ground a little bit early and it didn't germinate too well. So I've uh, filled in the, the spare uh, or the, 
the, the bare bits of uh, ground with uh, module sown beetroot. The main crop potatoes, they're doing fine, they're doing really well. This little patch here with the plastic on, that's going to get a second uh, batch of uh, potatoes, some uh, Jersey Royals. They'll be planted in about two weeks time and uh, they'll grow on and we'll have a second lot of uh, first earlies, but they'll, they'll be left in the ground to grow on as well. Broad beans are doing really well and we've, we've actually got beans forming at the top here, as you can see. So uh, they're doing okay. The Calvin and Wonder Peas, three broad drills, they're doing fine as well. We've started to put in flowers, we've got some flowers in. The gladioli have come through. The dahlias are going to go in here, uh, probably in the next week. All the way down the edge of the path, we've got marigolds. And what else can I show you? Yeah, the the main body of sweet corn. I think there are about 60 plants. I think they're swift. We planted those yesterday, my uh, cousin and I. And I'll just show you the the fruit plot. All the apples. Uh, have come good because uh, a couple of years ago they were damaged by rabbits at the base uh, but we didn't get anything really last year but this is the second year and they're, they're covered with apples so uh, we'll, we'll probably lose most of them with a June drop but then the, the trees are not that strong anyway and this is the 20 foot by 5 foot carrot box and you can see the fleece has uh, come away it tends to rip very easily I've been trying to uh, hold it on with the uh, battens of wood, but uh, as I say, I'm going to have to get some Environash. And all the currants are doing well, and gooseberries, they're covered in gooseberries. They've all suffered a little bit with the, the heat, and I have been watering the, the fruit bushes and the uh, apple trees. They've been watered twice, because I, I didn't want them to be, uh, to be damaged. And the strawberries, well, they're all coming, the strawberries. Still quite small. This is another bed that's to be weeded. And you can see on the bean frame as well, I've got the first batch of climbing French beans. So, all in all, we're doing quite well, I think. Um, everything's going according to plan. No real upsets as yet, apart from the overwintering red onions. Cherry tree, that's got a few cherries on as well, and the rhubarb has been absolutely fantastic. We've had, I don't know how many kilos, but a lot, probably 25 kilos, something like that, I would imagine. Just just keep cutting it off, it just keeps coming. So um, that's the uh, the quick roundup. I'll uh, try and get back into the habit of uh, making a few more up uploads in the next couple of weeks but as I say I've been really busy at work and I, I still am busy so um, I'll do what I can and uh, enjoy the bank holiday weekend and I hope to see you again soon. Cheers!